So I heard you like high-level SC2. Well, I got some for you. Puck versus Bowman, PvP on Frozen Fields. Top left, we have Bowman, the Team Psystorm player. Opening gateway first with two gas. Puck is opening two gateway with two gas and one probe, or excuse me, two probes in each assimilator. So, people did this in Wings of Liberty sometimes. The gas mines more effectively if you take both geysers and mine with two from each. So that's what Puck is doing. It also enables him to immediately jump into three and get that influx of gas right whenever he wants. So Puck doing some high level uh, macro things as far as gas management goes. This is pretty high level stuff to manage your gas to this extent. Interesting to see. So the two gateway versus one gateway variation means that Puck intends to be aggressive and Bowman probably means to expand or tech. Judging by his lack of gas I would guess that it's going to be an expo. And here's Bowman blocking Puck's expo. Big pain in the ass for Puck. Bowman saw Puck's pylon and could deduce that Puck wanted to expand so I'm guessing that's why he chose to block it. Two adepts on the way for Puck as well as Chrono Boosted Warp Gate and a Mothership Core. Two stalkers right after the adepts. So Puck is doing an aggressive little build here. He's completely saturated in his main. And if we look back in Camp Bowman, he's expanded and made a twilight. So Bowman is chrono boosting out of one gateway. He's going to have a difficult time holding this expansion without an additional gateway. Puck also has a robo behind this. Puck's two stalkers just finished and he's going to run forward with his adept phases. Scout a little bit, cancel and just run on foot. Bowman has a stalker come out. Bowman really needs to be chrono boosting his warp gate. Puck runs forward with an adept and these adepts are going to hose down that other one and tele tab out. Beautiful play there from Puck. Didn't take any whole damage on his adepts and now he has two stalkers about to be thrown into the fray and Bowman's in the shit as they say because he doesn't have a pylon on the slow ground and he still has just the one gateway. You know just the one. Puck phasing forward here. He's going to be able to harass from the backside. Bowman fires up in a photon overcharge. Bowman almost has warp gate done. Puck pressures forward here. Bowman does does not really have an additional pylon. This is the only one that can be useful defensively. Warp gate about halfway to or, uh, blink about halfway done. Warp gate just finishing for Bowman. Puck running forward, forcing another photon overcharge. Bowman does not want to let Puck get behind his mineral line and shut down mining, because once he starts losing probes, the game's over. Puck's expansion is almost done, and he's starting an observer. This is a good move because Puck sees the twilight. Theoretically, Bowman could have hit a pylon somewhere and hit a dark shrine. I see players sometimes do that, and then they'll oftentimes intentionally show you them chrono boosting the twilight and if you're not watching very closely it just looks like they're doing a warp gate build with blink but really they're not chrono boosting anything or they start the upgrade and cancel it and then go DT Puck has a stalker advantage here because Bowman didn't wait for all of his resources all of his units to pull together he went in piecemeal but he does have blink which will give Puck a tremendous advantage. So Puck has an observer, but Bowman has Blink. Puck microing one of his uh, stalkers back manually there, nice to see. Puck is smart enough not to go up that ramp. He waited for his observer, saw there would be too much stuff, because sure enough, Bowman was reinforcing. Two gateways here for Bowman, as well as a hidden gateway, interesting move. Puck has four, as well as a Robo and a Twilight. Very, very similar. So I don't know why Bowman chose to proxy this gateway. Maybe he wants Puck to scout him and think he's going to make a third. I don't know. However, if we go to units, they're even on Stalkers. So, both players are doing very similar builds. I would say 
Puck is kind of doing everything a bit better, though. He has the two more gateways. He's scouted more. And he's pressed. This is a great spot for his observer because it prevents him from being ambushed from the high ground and being uh, attacked and not knowing. Warp Prism here from Puck. It's one of his favorite units. I think that was going to the watchtower. Gateway finishing here for Bowman. That will be useful. Oh, some Warp Prism Micro. This is. Oh, and an Immortal, guys. This is going to be so great. Puck is going to use this uh, Warp Prism to pick up weak units as well as reinforce, and he's probably just going to steamroll Bowman with this Micro. Puck has a slight Stalker advantage, but he has an Immortal and a Warp Prism. Puck's going to move his Warp Prism forward to Micro here. Hot pickup time. Bowman's going to try to blink backwards, but he just doesn't really have the firepower to deal with this Immortal. His only chance with Blink is to burst things down and blink back, but Puck's Warp Prism prevents anything from being bursted down, as well as his Blink. Puck is one of the best Micros in all of America, as we see him Microing back his Blink Stalkers here. The weak ones first. Bowman tries to do a points dive onto the Warp Prism, but Puck brings it back and does a remix on him like Hitman Holla, and oh my god, that was some great micro. If you enjoyed that Puck game, subscribe to my channel. It's for free, and you get more StarCraft. Wow, what a deal. Also, follow Puck on Twitter. He's a great guy, and he's going to make StarCraft 2 great again.